BMW's X1, and this is now the second generation. The first generation was good, but a lot of people had comments about it. The second generation is lucky in the sense that being, it's the second in another way too. Because the 2 Series Active Tourer was the poor child, shall we say, that had to live with the fact that many people bemoaned of being the first ever front wheel drive BMW. Well, the second generation X1 is on that same platform and it doesn't carry that stigma, shall we say, because the public's getting a bit more used to the front wheel drive. And quite honestly, I don't see that it makes that much difference. But you have a look at, let's take a look. This is a full-sized five-seater family SUV. Smallish boot undercover, as you can see, the quoted figure is 216 liters, but of course you can drop the rear seats, you can take out the shelf, and you can go up to about 1100 liters of boot space if you need it for the family. Interestingly for a BMW, is there is a space saver spare wheel under the boot. Because of course all BMWs do come standard with run flat tires, so quite an interesting little anomaly. Most of the BMWs I've had lately have not had any uh, spare wheel. A nice feature of course on a lot of the SUVs these days and particularly on BMW, press the little button, automatic closing of the boot. I really like it. You come around the car generally, as I said a moment ago, it's a fair sized good sized family SUV and perhaps BMW have decided to go with a front wheel drive platform on the basis that they want to differentiate a lot more from the X3 which of course is the middle brother in the family of SUVs from BMW and almost why have X1 X3 well here's the difference because now you can have front wheel drive as opposed to rear wheel drive or of course there is the option in the X1 of all-wheel drive as well, where they put X drive instead of S drive, which is this one. And you'll also notice right now that this is the two liter petrol version, which means it puts out 141 kilowatts, 280 Newton meters of torque. Pretty potent for a, hate to say, but mom's taxi maybe. Let's take a look inside. Enter the driver's seat of the X1 and you'll see very basic, simple instrumentation because quite interesting about the test car we have over here is it's probably one of the more basic BMWs I've tested in a long time. Not that I'm complaining, but it's good to get the more real feeling sometimes without a lot of the extras. You can see we've actually done 1141 kilometers on this test, which is a longer test than uh, maybe we often do. I'll show you fuel consumption in a moment because you go over to the screen, the infotainment screen, and you'll see again, it's the basic version that BMW do offer with navigation, so certainly no complaints about that. You also have your push button, of course, for stop start and your keyless go. And if you do want to turn off your stop start v system on the engine. But back to the infotainment screen and you'll see if I press the menu button, simple little touch on the menu, there you have your main menu and let's just go to vehicle information quickly because that is a crucial one I want to show you is in the 1100 kilometers that we've covered we averaged 7.3 liters per hundred. Now that's on a two liter petrol engine which also remembering you do have some little buttons down over here next to the gear shift and these are crucial buttons on every BMW. You have the Eco Pro mode which I used once and I must say did blunt the performance of the engine a little bit I thought. You have the default comfort mode or you can go into sport mode on this car which definitely firms everything up, changes the mapping of the revving etc and gives you that extra bit of grunt and I use that a bit as well so maybe that's why 7.3 liters but it certainly is a real world figure and I'm pretty sure you will never do any worse than that. Gear shift is an 8 speed automatic gearbox but interestingly again the standard one not the sport gear shift which means you have the old fashioned style of pulling it down through reverse neutral drive as opposed to a lot of the BMWs these days that simply have the click forward and backwards for drive and reverse but it's no hardship whatsoever. Electronic parking brake which is always a nice feature but another fact and place where it's very quick to spot that you don't have 
the top level model is if you look over here, we have air conditioning as opposed to climate control. G good system, works well, but maybe I've got spoiled and maybe a lot of buyers. It's something you can choose. The point with BMW to a very, very large extent, as always, is you choose the options you want. You tick the boxes you want. But I mentioned, nice to actually drive the vehicle in more standard spec for a change. Full leather, of course, which is nice. So you have all of those items. What I'm going to do now is, seeing as this is a family vehicle, show you what's it like in the back seat. In the back seat of the X1, driver's seat set for myself, it certainly is spacious. I can pretty much stretch out, lean back, etc. You can adjust the angle of the backrest slightly as well in this car, so again, you can make it more comfortable. Definitely room for two to three in the back, very comfortably. You could tour very nicely. We did a nice open road run in this car. I can tell you it's extremely comfortable. So let's talk price. Base price on the X1, 2 liter S drive, 562.852. Spec it as you want. You can go mad on a car like this, as I've spoken many times. You can go over the 800,000 mark if you really want it. It's one of those cars you can have fun with ticking boxes, and there's so many toys, extras, luxuries, safety features, etc., etc., that you can add to the car. You can do what you want. You can never go wrong. We all know that. There is obviously competition. You've got BMW, the BMW, as I mean, you've got Mercedes, you've got Audi, you've got the VW Tiguan would come in here. You've got so many. The list is endless. But BMW is BMW. You get that five-year, 100,000 kilometer maintenance plan standard in the price as always. The car has a five-star Euro NCAP rating. It ha ticks all those boxes you're going to want. And if you're a BMW driver or you aspire to be a BMW driver, this is one you need to take a look at. For Motor Matters, I'm Alan R and I'll see you next time.